Oh my Lord, make me brave, brave, and make my task easy for me, easy for me. A faith step onto the cloud of Islam, and you will discover the light of Iman. Proclaim this message entrusted to you, and the cloud of Islam will carry you. Christians say, Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. He's described as the son of God in the Bible. But it's not like that. Jesus is begotten, not made. Not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Jesus is begotten. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Isa ibn Maryama, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah, is a messenger of Allah. He's not God. And he's not the begotten son of God. God doesn't beget. This is the miracle. This is God's creation. You can create a million Jesuses without father, without mother. Just, just there. Now it is my pleasure and honor to ask Sheikh Ahmad Didar to address us all. Sheikh Ahmad Didar. Qala Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَتَحَرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ صدق الله صدق الله العظيم Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters the topic for this evening's discussion is Christ in Islam when for the very first time in my own country, I mooted the subject, Christ in Islam. There was a consternation among the Christians of my country. Christ in Islam. They began to wonder whether we Muslims have another Christ in opposition to Jesus Christ. So I had to assure my audience, and if there are any Christian brethren in the audience, I assure them here and now that we have not got another Christ. There is only one Christ, and that is Jesus Christ. Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, he is the Christ. But some of our brethren, they have some fears about this word Christ. They think Christ is synonymous with crucifixion. Because the Christian is always talking Christ crucified, Christ crucified. So they think Christ and crucified are synonymous terms but they are not. Christ comes from the Hebrew word Messiah. Arabic, Masih. The Quran speaks about him, Masih who is Ibn Maryama. Masih, Messiah in Hebrew, Arabic Masih. Translated into Greek, this Hebrew word Masih, Messiah, translated into Greek, it becomes Christos. But the us, is too unfamiliar to the Western world, so they cut off the os and left with Christ. This is the translation of the Hebrew word and the Arabic word, Masih, Messiah. What does it mean? You see, we Muslims, we made our Salat just now. Before Salat, we make ablution, wudu. And during the wudu, we wet our hands and we rub them over. Our heads and the ears. What do you call that? Huh? Masah. You call it Masah. Masah means to rub over. Masih means one who is rub over. Priests and kings were anointed, rubbed over with holy oil. So from today, you are our Imam. From today, you are our leader. From today, you are our king. Anointed, meaning officially appointed. That's what it means. Nothing more than that. 
and priests and kings were anointed in consecration to the office. And the Holy Bible uses that word Messiah, Messiah, Christ, dozens of times. In the Holy Bible, you'll come across the word anointed, anointed, anointed. But in the original Hebrew, it's Messiah, 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 anointed. They do not translate every word that's Messiah as Christ. They translate it as anointed. But priests and kings had been anointed, been made Messiah. Pots and pans, pots and pans were anointed, says the Bible. In Hebrew, Messiah. Pots and pans, horns, horns of the anointed, of the Messiah, horns. Cyrus, Cyrus, a pagan, a mushy king in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. It speaks about him that he is the anointed. A mushrik, anointed. In Hebrew, Messiah. In Greek, Christ. But the Christians do not translate it so. They translate as anointed. So you do not think. Only when it comes to Jesus, they translate as Christ. Christ. But this word Christ is a common name, common term applied in the Bible to priests and kings and even mushrik rulers. Mushriks. The Holy Bible. So Christ doesn't mean God and doesn't mean the Son of God. It means one who is officially appointed. As such, we Muslims believe that Jesus is the Christ. We Muslims believe, without any persuasion, that Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he is the Messiah, the Messiah translated Christ. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We believe. You're not a Muslim if you don't believe these things. But when we tell this to the Christians in my country, it's an ocean of Christianity, my country. We Muslims are less than 2% of the South African population. For every 100, there's only two Muslims. For every 100, there's only two Muslims. So in that ocean of Christianity, if you try to curry favor, trying to be nice with the Christian, that you know if we can say a few good words about your Jesus, you in turn might say a few good words about our Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That if I scratch your back, you scratch my back. I say you are very nice, so you say you are also very nice. We say no, no, no. We don't do things like that. We don't tell you about Jesus for these reasons, that you may say a few good words about Muhammad. This is what am I speaking is on the authority of the Holy Quran, Allah's Kalam. In the ayah I read to you, from the Holy Quran, from Surah Ali Imran. Surah Ali Imran. In this book, this encyclopedia called the Quran. If you have a translation, where do you find it? 2,000 pages. A veritable encyclopedia. How are you going to find Imran? Paging to Imran, Imran, you might have just skipped it. Imran, 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 and you go through the whole volume and you didn't find it. How do you find it? Beautiful. This particular one has an index, a very comprehensive index at the back. You go to the index, just like a dictionary, and look for Imran, I-M-R-A-N, Imran, and the I, and it'll tell you chapter three. Three is easy to find, because every chapter is numbered. Every page is numbered. Three is easy to find. Once you have found chapter three, surah three, and now I'm telling you that the ayah I read is ayah number 42. Ayah 42. 42 is also easy to find because every verse is numbered. You found it? Yes, you'll find it. Now I, I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that when anybody, any speaker, makes any reference from the Holy Quran, and if he gives you reference, Make a point of going home and checking up. Not that you're doubting the speaker, that the speaker had any reason to bluff you, to deceive you. No, no, no. You don't mistrust people on the face. Prima first, see, we take everybody to be honest, straightforward. Man gives you a reference as a Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 42. Go home and check it up in your English translation if you have, or the Swahili translation if you have. Go and check it up. See it with your own eyes. Read it with your heart and mind and try to absorb the meaning. 
it's a confirmation of what the speaker had told you. So that knowledge becomes a part of your own property. And you, in turn, will be able to share with others. That's the secret. The reason is that I want you to share this. You just hear, listen, and get entertained, and you go away, say wonderful speech, mashallah, mashallah, and finish, gone. No, no, no. Take the trouble of going home and checking up. The ayah I read to you, it reads, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa is qalatil malaika to ya Maryamu. Behold, the angel said, O oh Mary. Who is Mary? Huh? The mother of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. The mother of Jesus Christ. Wa is qalatil malaika to ya Maryamu. Inna Allah has tafaki. Wa taharaki. That Allah has chosen thee, chosen you, purified you, chosen you above the women of all nations. This is the Quran talking. Not the Bible, the Quran is saying. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The Quran says, Allah says, she is a woman chosen above the women of all nations. And it is surprising. It is a surprising thing. Who is speaking? The Holy Prophet Muhammad An Arab. An Arab is speaking. And this Arab is provoking other Arabs. This Arab is provoking the Jews. This Arab is provoking the Jews. The Jews were a powerful force in Medina at the time of our Prophet they insinuated in the Jewish Talmud, the holy book of the Jews, they say that a Roman soldier by the name of Pandera, he raped Mary, and that illegitimate child of hers was given off as the son of God. That is the Jewish Talmud. The Christians embrace the Jews. They say they killed him as an imposter and as a false prophet. The Christians embrace the Jews. We we say, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was a woman chosen above the women of all nations. By saying that, Muhammad وسلم, is provoking the Jews, because it's not suitable to what they believe, and he's provoking the other Arabs. That this Arab is honoring a Jewess, a nation that was looking down upon the Arabs for 3,000 years. They still look down upon them today. The Jews. They look down upon the Arab cousins. These are the children of Hagar, Bibi Hajra, Hagar. They say they are the Hagarins, Hagarins. And the religion is Hagarism. They won't say Islam is Hagarism. They still look down upon the Arabs. They said Father Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. Sarah was his legitimate wife. Hajra was a born woman, a slave woman, a woman from Africa. As such, her children come for nothing. They are rubbish. The Jews. They look down upon the Arabs. And yet this Arab is honoring a Jewess. I'm asking the Christians and the Jews account for that. Account for that. Why would an Arab go out of his way to provoke his own people? He doesn't say, my mother or my wife or my daughter. She is the greatest woman, the best woman in the world. No, 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 no. He said, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, she is a woman chosen above the women of all nations. Account for that. The accounting is there. The Quran continues. Wa iskalatil malaika tu ya Maryamu, inna Allah has tafaki, wa taharaki, wa stafaki ala nisara alameen. Ya Maryamu gnuti li rabbiki was judi warka imar raqeen. So, O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly, prostrate thyself and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. Zalika minam bayil ghaybi, nuhihi ilayka. The source of this inspiration. Zalika minam bayil ghaybi. This is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we, Allah says, reveal unto you, O Messenger, by inspiration. That you were not there, you were not there, O Muhammad, when they cast lots with arrows, as to which of them should be charged with the care of Mary, nor were thou with them when they disputed the point. The story is that the mother of Maryam, she was barren, no children, for a long time. So she prays to Allah for a child. And she is tempting Allah. 
She is tempting Allah. I said, look, ya Allah, you give me a baby, I will dedicate my baby for temple services, for your service, for your church, for the house of God. I will dedicate my child. Thinking that she is going to get a son, a boy. Allah heard her prayer. And a child was born. But the child happened to be a girl, a female. And in no way is a female like the male for temple services. What is she to do? She had vowed, she had made a qasam that I'm going to dedicate my child for temple services. So when the child is big enough to look after herself, she takes the baby to the temple. Says, now who will look after this child to serve you, clean up the thing for you, prepare your food for you, everything that this child will do for you, for the priests. Now every priest who saw this child, this girl, beautiful girl, Maryam, every priest said, I will look after her. I will be a godfather to the child. That is, I will be a godfather to the child. And everybody can't be a godfather. So they started, they said, look, let's cast lots. Let us toss the coin, so to say, head or tail. And that casting of lots, it came to the turn of Zachariah that he was, he won the toss. So when he won the toss, there was an argument. In things like this, there's always arguments. You know, when you play a game of dice, you throw and you got six, and say, no, no, you're not fair. You know, you didn't throw it properly. This is man. When somebody wins, we are always complaining. Say, no, 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 you didn't throw it properly. You know, you, you cheated me. There was a dispute. So Allah is telling our Nabi through the Quran, telling us that, oh, Muhammad, you were not there when they cast lots with arrows as to which of them should be charged with the care of Mary. No, you were there when they disputed the point. How do you know? He says, it's given to you by inspiration. This is the word of Allah, Allah is giving to you. You had no knowledge about this. You are an ummi, unlearned person. You didn't have recourse to the Christian or, or Jewish scriptures. The Jews and the Christians, they say Muhammad copied the book. Muhammad copied it, the Quran. I'm asking what is there to copy? To copy would be to copy, to plagiarize, steal somebody else's literature. The Jews say that Jesus is the illegitimate child, Muhammad copied that. No, what is there to copy? He's telling you in the Quran, what I love Mary is no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him, meaning they were mortal, they were subject to death. This man, Jesus, also will be subject to death. Mal Masih ibn Maryama illa Rasul Kad khalat min kabli rasul Wa ummuhu siddika And his mother was a virtuous woman A saintly woman The mother of Jesus, Allah says Mal Masih ibn Maryama illa Rasul Kad khalat min kabli rasul Wa ummuhu siddika Kana Ya'kulani ta'am And they both at food What's so wonderful about that? We all eat food, don't we? Huh? It's nice. No. What Allah is drawing your attention? They say, she is a goddess. Jesus is a god. But Allah said, they both had food. How can they be gods? Because if you eat food, you have a call of nature. You run to the toilet. Does God run to the toilet? No, that's this trying to tell you. He said, look, they all both had food. He doesn't say just run to the toilet, and there's no toilet to run behind the bush, run behind the rocks. No, no. God doesn't speak that language. He said they both had food to tell you that they, they have to call up nature. Does God have call of nature? Does he run to the toilet? Or the bush? No. Kana yakulani ta'am. Unzur. Kaifa nubayinu lahumul ayati. See, see. How we are making our science clear to you? How simple Allah is putting it to you? Unzur. Have another look. Look. See. And give it another look. Summanzur. How they have deviated from the path. Simple, straightforward logic. That this man was a messenger of God. He was a human being like any other human being. No doubt a mighty miracle worker, a great prophet, but human, 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 eating food, running to the toilet, that's not the quality of God.
This is how the Quran speaks. What is the Dupati? So we in the house of Islam, when this good news is given to her about the birth of the Holy Son, she says, She says, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me sexually? Otherwise, her uncle, her grandfather, as she grew up, everybody's touching her, fondling her, making her to sit on the lap. <laughs> Not that. This touch means sex. No man has touched me. How can I have a baby? How can I have a son when no man has touched me sexually? So the angel says in reply, even so, Allah creates what He wills. Whenever He decrees a matter, He merely says to it, Be, and it is. For Allah to create a Jesus without a human father, just like that. He wants to create a million Jesuses without father, without mother, just like that. That is our Allah. But a million Jesuses without father, without mother, who's going to change the napkins? Who's going to breastfeed them? No, no. So Jesus needed a mother. He had a mother. What does that make him into a god? Or the son of God? No, nothing of the kind. This is the miracle. This is God's creation. He creates anything what he likes just like that. Now, this is the Quranic concept of the birth of Jesus. What is the Christian concept? You see, the Christians also say that Jesus Christ was born miraculously. We are agreed. The Muslims and the Christians are agreed that Jesus was born miraculously, without any male intervention. But the language in which they say it, <laughs> I had an occasion of visiting the Bible house in Johannesburg. I was out there looking for an Indonesian Bible. It was in 1977. Indonesian Bible. You see, I have a habit that when I go to a foreign country, a strange country, I try to learn the language of the people a little bit, that I can start sharing with them a few words and create a bond, a relationship, you know, that I love you people, I, I'm honoring your language by speaking your language. So I was looking for an Indonesian Bible. So I go to the Bible house and browsing through the Bibles, different Bibles in my country, very sophisticated country. I come across a New Testament in Greek and English. Like this Quran is Arabic and English. That one was Greek and English. Expensive book, expensive volume. I picked it up. Then I found a type of King James Version. I picked that up. Then I got the Indonesian Bible. I picked that up. But I didn't know that I was being watched. Somebody was watching me. The supervisor. Look at this Indian fellow with a funny headgear and this beard. What is he doing with all these Bibles? So he walks up to me, an elderly gentleman. He's asking me my interest in these books. I says, no, I'm doing comparative religion. That's my interest in these books. And I says, you know, we believe in Jesus. And he's surprised. He said, look, you meant having a cup of tea with me? I said, not at all. He says, come into my office. So I went into his office. He ordered some tea. And I started to chat with him. I said, we believe in Jesus. As one of the mightiest messengers of God, we believe in his miraculous birth. We believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission, of healing those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. And the guy couldn't believe his ears. That's what I'm telling him. 